Hi, this is Noah. I'm making this video to tell you what's going on in Israel right now from my point of view. And please don't expect anything scripted or politically correct. You know me. And this is from my heart, from the deepest place in my heart. First of all, thank you to all of you who have asked about my personal well-being. I'm okay. My family is fine. My children are here with me. Um, my close circle of friends. But you know, Israel is a small country and we're all connected. They say, Kol Yisrael Achim, Kol Yisrael Arevim. We're all, we're all brothers. We're all connected to each other. And yes, yes, so many people that I know are absolutely not well. No, this country is not well. We are living a horrible, horrible nightmare. I mean, uh, the, the, the proportions of which nobody could ever have imagined. This is our 9-11. This is a tiny country, and the amount of wounded, the amount of dead, the amount of kidnapped, held hostage, the amount of tragedy and horror is unfathomable, and the magnitude is only now being revealed, because a lot of things were censored, and now we're starting to realize what happened here. Terrorists infiltrated the border with Gaza. They came to slaughter and kill and kidnap and rape and burn alive and conquer and take bodies and mutilate bodies and take women and children and babies and old people. And, 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 and that's what they did. They were successful at everything. And bombs coming from Gaza and bombs coming from the north. I mean, the Israeli population is stunned. I mean, it's, it's devastating, my friends. It's devastating. I can't even describe to you. I mean, I know there, there are other countries out there and other people who have suffered wars, but I think this country has never, never, definitely not in my lifetime, and of all the horrible wars, I think this is probably the most horrible. The surprise, the shock, everything we held true, shattered. We thought we had a strong army. We thought we had the best special intelligence in the world. We thought and we thought and we thought we thought we had a government that was protecting us. Nothing, nothing, everything. We were betrayed. The Israeli people were thrown to the dogs. And, and, and I can't, the devastation, I mean, it's, it's enormous. The amount of people. Suffering. I mean, I mean, I've been. I can't stop crying. Actually, right now I'm not crying. Right now I'm trying to be serious. Right now I'm also very, very angry and frustrated. But I'm trying to find love in my heart. You know what gives me hope? The incredible love that I see around the volunteering, the courage of the people, the solidarity. Those same people that you saw demonstrating for weeks and weeks, for months, against the dictatorship coup, against this evil government, warning that this would happen, and here it has happened. What's the first thing they do? They run to volunteer, to help each other. They run with their, with, with, with their, with their hearts, with their talents, with their money, with food, with supplies, to help each other. And that is so inspiring. I'm proud to be part of this nation that behaves in such a way. It's so beautiful. And the other thing that gives me hope is that after we've counted our dead and buried them and mourned and cried, after we've brought back the hostages, it's terrifying. I can't imagine what they must be going through and the fathers and the mothers here in Israel not knowing where their children are. Oh my God. And after we've ousted this horrible government and brought decent people to run this country, and after we've asked all the hardest questions, then the chosen people will have to choose. Who are we? What kind of nation are we? What kind of people? What kind of country? Who are we? Me, I've, I've made the choices already years ago, and I continue to make them every single day. I choose peace. I choose solidarity. I choose to end the occupation. I don't want to conquer another people. I don't want their misery. I want their happiness. I know that their well-being is my well-being. All people are connected. We are one. I choose rights for everybody, from the river to the sea and everywhere in the world equal in human rights and dignity and respect. I choose to be a light upon nations. I choose light for all nations. Is this possible? I believe it is. And maybe from this def devastation, this hope will grow. This vision will manifest itself finally, like a baby being born after pain. I know it well. F3. And if, if, if we manage to do all of this, then maybe, maybe, maybe the suffering and the bloodshed, and the mothers and fathers and families shattered, and the pain and all of those things will not have been in vain.